10 minutes of English listening before sleeping. Alice Jackson's husband, Henry, was a man of habit, so it was that at exactly six o'clock in the evening, she was in the kitchen getting a beer for him out of the fridge and watching him walk up the path. She was smiling. Today, the routine was going to be different. It was their tenth wedding anniversary, and some friends were coming round for drinks at eight. There was a big ice tattoo of a couple kissing in the middle of the table in the living room, with twenty glasses waiting for the guests. Alice was looking forward to the evening. She was very happy. She had a beautiful baby sleeping upstairs, a lovely home, and a husband who she adored. Henry opened the door and came into the kitchen. She turned round to kiss him and give him his beer. Sit down, Henry said. I've got something to say. Alice had no idea that in the next two minutes, her whole life was going to change. I'm sorry, he said, and it's our anniversary as well. But it's just that Caddy and I are in love. Poppy won't miss me. He's too young. She didn't believe her ears. She was in a dream. I'll get ready for the party, she said. She walked into the living room. When she returned, Henry was standing with his back to her, drinking his beer. She was carrying something heavy. He turned. What on earth? These were Henry Jackson's last words. His wife hit him over the head. At first, he didn't move. Then he fell to the floor. Suddenly, Alice began to think very clearly. She took the ice tattoo back to the living room and found the palace. Then she turned up the central heating and went upstairs to put on some makeup. The palace came quickly. Is he all right? She asked. He's dead. Alice screamed. No, no, not Henry. My Henry, oh Henry. Through her tears, she told how she put the baby to bed and came downstairs to find Henry on the kitchen floor. Bucklers, said Vitati Barry. They took her into the living room. Sit down, Miss Jackson. Surgeon Tyler, get Miss Jackson a drink, a brandy with some ice. Pooh, it's hot in this room. I hope you understand, Miss Jackson, that we have to search the house immediately. We must find the murder weapon. The room was getting hotter. Suddenly, an arm fell off the ice tattoo onto the table. It was melting. Church and Tyler went to the tattoo and picked up the melting arm. He broke it into bits and put some into Alice's brandy. Phew. Can I have some glass of water, Mrs. Jackson? It's so hot in here. I think we all need one," said the detective. And with eyes, they were on very hot and thirsty. Alice's friends arrived. "Poor Alice, poor Henry," they cried, and they tried to comfort her. "Oh, thank you, thank you," sobbed Alice. "Please stay and have a drink. Help yourselves." They all had drinks, gin and tonic, whiskey, and they all had ice. The statue was now nearly a pool of water on the floor. I wonder what the buckler hit him with," said one guest. "Who knows?" said another. Taking a sip of her drink, Alice heard this conversation and smiled into her brandy. Hollywood Kids, Los Angeles, and Easy. In Hollywood, 
everybody wants to be rich, famous, and beautiful. Nobody wants to be old, unknown, and poor. For Hollywood kids, life can be difficult because they grow up in such an unreal atmosphere. The parents are in p e t e r s and the children at part of the parents' ambitions. Parents pay for extravagant parties, expensive cars, a designer clothes. When every dream can come true, kids learn the value of nothing because they have everything. Thirteen-year-old boy, Trent McGuire, has a driver, credit cards, and unlimited cars to do what he wants, when he wants. One day, I'll earn more than my dad. He boasts. Parents buy care and attention for their children because they have no time to give it themselves. Amanda's mother employs a personal trainer, a nutritionist, a bodyguard, c h a u f f e r a singing coach, and a counselor to look after her 15-year-old daughter's needs. Often, there is no parent at home most days, so children decide whether to make their own meals or go out to restaurants. When to watch television or do homework, they organize their own social lives. They play no childhood games. They become adults before they are ready. Hollywood has always been the city of dreams. The kids in LA live unreal lives, where money, beauty, and pleasure are the only gods. We children around the world soon start. I think the same, or do they already? Looks are very important in Hollywood. If you're good-looking, you will go far. I want to be a beautician. You grow up really fast in LA. Everyone is in a rush to be an adult, to be going clubs. It's not cool to be a kid. m i s e n o age 18. I live in a hotel, and when I come home from school, there are maybe 80 people who say good day to me. It's their job to say that. In the bathroom, there are mirrors everywhere. I love looking at myself. I can spend five hours doing my hair and posing. I'm going to be a model. Emily, aged 10. I've wanted to get my nose done since I was 12. My friends started having plastic surgery and liposuction during my freshman year of high school. My nose cost 10,000 U.S. dollar, but it was worth it. It's changed my life. I'm gonna get into the movies. Lindsay, aged 18. Thank you and sleep well.